Hey everybody, this is Athalia Jumper, and I just reached 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing, and I can't believe I've actually become this popular on YouTube. I feel so honored that so many of you like my videos and want to see more of them and know when I've posted a new video. So thank you all so much for liking and watching and subscribing to my video, to my channel and my videos. You're all absolutely amazing. So. For 10,000 subscribers, I thought that I would make a video to answer two of the most asked questions on my channel, one of which is, what program do you use, and the other of which is, are you a boy or a girl? So if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a girl, and I use iMovie, which is a movie editing program that comes with an Apple computer. And if you don't have a Mac computer, then as far as I know, you won't be able to get this program, so I'm sorry. but. I don't believe it's available for PCs. Uh, so this is just a short, shortish tutorial of how I use iMovie. The first thing that I, I have to do is I go in and I create a new movie. And you can choose from several different themes in iMovie and each one just has a few different features that the others don't have. So when I'm making a red video, I tend to use the modern theme, it just seems to fit the band better, but when I'm making Icon for Hire videos, I tend to go with the neon theme because it's bright and colorful and that just kind of fits the band, especially if you've ever seen their cover art, you'll know what I'm talking about. So then you just click create, choose the theme you want, click create, and you type in the title of what, of what your video is going to be. And you hit OK. That's right, I already have that one. So, just so you see how that works, you just, all of my projects that I've started are here. So, I already have this one set up because I already tried to film this video once and the audio was terrible, and so I'm starting over. Um, so, the first thing I do is I go into iTunes and I search for. There's a little iTunes thing here. It's synced to iTunes on the computer because it's a Mac and it knows that you have iTunes. And it just, you search for the song that you want and you click and you drag it into your video. And then you have it right here. Now the next thing that I do is I go and I put my intro in, which you have all seen. I go over here to where it says maps and backgrounds and I choose one of these backgrounds. You've probably seen most of these in one of my videos at some point. This is the one that I use for my intro. And then I go over here to where it says titles and I choose the title that I want to use, which for my intro is always this one. And you put it over top of the background and you type in your text. And then you have to change the text color. You select the text and click on this little box up here in the corner and choose what color you want it to be. Now for the rest of my intro, for Icon for Hire, I tend to use these themes up here. Which these titles up here come with the theme, so if I had chosen a different theme at the beginning when I was making the video, I would have different options up here. So for Neon, these are the ones that come with it. So these are the ones that I tend to use. Now I also tend to try and make my videos fit the or make the lyrics fit the rhythm of the song. So if you listen to the song as I do over and over and over when I make these videos, I try to find a good place to have the lyrics transition. Right there where that that big drop is, that's where I want the uh music to, or where I want the lyric to, to, to shift. Sorry for stammering, I'm trying to th think and produce audible sounds at the same time, and I'm not good at that, I'm much better at just typing quietly in a little corner of my room. That's how I function. Um, this is, this little bar here, it adjusts the size of your text just down here. It just adjusts how big they are, so it makes it easier if you want to see more of your video at one time, see, this is how long the song is. And now I have this entire thing just kind of in one screen and I can see my entire video and just kind of scroll through it, see what's in it. But if I want to actually edit this, see if I move it at all, it's going to become like 36 seconds long, which is ridiculous. And so, if you make it bigger, 
you can much more easily adjust the actual so length uh, length that your clip stays on the screen. That's what this is. It adjusts how long this text is going to stay on the screen and at what point it's going to fade out and the next one will fade in. So here it's staying on the screen for 4.8 seconds, 3.6 seconds, you get the idea. So if you want to adjust it down to a fraction of a second like I normally do, I tend to want it to be bigger so that I can adjust it more easily and get it more precise. Now, again, as I said, I want this to be right where the rhythm changes. Excuse my uh, horrible music technical terms. I don't know anything about music, actually. I don't play any instruments. I don't know how to read music or write music. I don't know what music terminology is. So if I use the wrong terminology for anything in music, please forgive me. I appreciate the music, but I cannot make the music or properly speak about the music. That was about perfect, I think. I don't know why it's coming on so abruptly though. This should kind of spin on a little bit because that's the way the transition is. The kind of spins on a little bit, but I can I can fix that later. Um now in order to show you more of the actual text effects and how they work, I'm going to just kind of pull this one out a little bit to get it closer to where it needs to be. All right, so the lyrics start about there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Alright, so these are all of the different text effects that you have as options. I tend to use a lot of them for different things. Um, sometimes I just pick which one seems to flow with the rhythm the best or which one I haven't used in a while to add some variety to the video. I tend to use this one a lot for anything that talks about falling because the lyrics fall on and off of the screen. I tend to use this one to anything that has to do with seeing because it kind of looks like an eye opening. Um, just, you get the idea. I just try to pick things that either fit the rhythm of the song or the message, the words that are being sung. Um, so for this, I think this kind of fits the rhythm, this particular one where the lyrics just kind of pop up, as the text effect is called. So, aptly named. And I just type in the lyrics. And now I already showed you how to change the text color right here. This is where you change the text size, and this is where you change the text font. Now, if you open this up, it'll give you a bunch of, like, down here are the kind of commonly used fonts, popular fonts, I suppose. Up here are ones that you've recently used that aren't in this list, so anything that's not in this list that you've recently used will show up up here in case you want to use it again in the same video, which I do all the time, so that's, that's useful. But if you click on show fonts down here, it just gives you a much longer list of font options. And now for anything that has to do with hearts, I tend to use this font because it has hearts in it. And I tend to try and find fonts that fit the lyrics of the song. Now this particular font doesn't, doesn't come on a Mac and it doesn't come with this program. So I had to download it, which is something I do quite often in order to get fonts that fit the lyrics of the song. So the site that I typically use for this is called 1001fonts.com. It's right here. And it just you can search for anything really. And in this case I've, it's I searched for hearts because that's what I googled. Um, and it just comes in with all of these different fonts that have to do with hearts that are offered in this program. And it'll tell you here what their what what the copyrights on it is. This one's free for personal use. Um, this one's free for for commercial use, so you pick you know you pick your pick your thing. Some of them you have to pay for. Most of them here are free. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not it's only free for personal use or whether you're actually allowed to use it for commercial or business purposes for free. Um, now this one I don't believe I've downloaded before, and the reason I have is because it looks like I'm guessing only the O's are actually hearts, and since there's no O in the word heart. If I were to make the word heart, that font, there wouldn't be any hearts in it. So, so that's, that's why this isn't the one that I use. However, I don't think I've downloaded it before because I don't, I wouldn't use it. So I'm going to download it now just to show you how that's done. You just hit download, it'll show up over here in your downloads folder. You open it up, 
and whenever it loads, give it a moment, there it is. You click on this one that's t.ttf, and it'll open up a thing. This will show you what each letter will look like with this font. And then you'll just hit install font. It's going to tell you there's some problems. It, there isn't always problems, but sometimes there are problems with the font. It's never really affected anything in my experience. If they're just minor minor problems. That one's circle of love. What was this one called? Words of love? Yeah, that must be it. Words of love. There it is. Okay, words of love is... Ooh, look. There's a little arrow through that heart. That's cool. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like any of the letters in H-E-A-R-T. Any of the letters in heart have hearts in them, so that's why I haven't used this one in the past. But words of love is what it's called, so then if you go into your font book again here, and you go down to show fonts, and you go all the way down to W for words, which is quite a ways down, there it is, words of love. And there you have it, and it's tiny, so I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. There it is. Now, so that's what that font looks like. And now that font will also show up in any other program on my computer, such as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, anywhere else where you want to use text and fonts. Now that you've installed it, it will be there. Now, one more thing that I want to show you before I, I'm done here is the transitions. Now, a lot of these I just use for other like video projects that I work on, not necessarily for my lyric videos, but I do use this cross dissolve one quite often. And the reason why I use it is because oftentimes, especially in faster paced songs, it's very difficult to find text effects that leave the screen quickly enough for the next line to be on the screen before the next line is already being sung. And so this just kind of speeds up the process a little bit. It makes them fade together on top of each other so that the one lyric doesn't have to be completely off the screen before the next one shows up. So they're just kind of both there at the same time for just a fraction of a second, and that helps just kind of when the lyrics are close together and tight to make that transition a little bit quicker. And you can adjust the length of this, this transition as well. You can, right now it's automatically set to one second, but you can adjust it however you want. I usually either have it at one second or 0.5 seconds, depending on what the song needs, but sometimes it, it's different, so you can set it for however long you want it to be. Um, this transition here is kind of a cool one, and I've used it a couple of times. It comes with the theme, and so if I had chosen a different theme, again, I would have different transitions here. And then, I think the last thing that you need to know is how to export your video when you're all finished with it. And the main way to do that is up here where it says share. You can pick any of these options. I've never used any of them except for file. I like to have a backup file on my computer just in case something happens, my video gets deleted off of YouTube, whatever. I like to have a finished version of it downloaded on my computer as a backup. So I always download a file and then I upload it to YouTube from there. So you title your video, pick what quality you want it to be, and you hit next and it'll export it into whatever folder on your computer you want it to be in. Uh, there is an option here where you can just, I think, export it out of iMovie and directly onto YouTube, but I've never used it. So, that's the basics of how to make a lyric video in iMovie. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you can do with this program, especially if you're making different types of videos, like actual movies or music videos with, with uh, pictures or, or movie clips. Uh, but for purposes of making lyric videos, it's just the basics of how I do it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And thank you once again for 10,000 subscribers. There's 10,000 of you who want regular updates on and want to know right away whenever I post a video. And that just makes me completely honored. And so thank you so very much. You make me very happy. Have a nice day.